better, Ramanish? Yes, yes, Samuel. We can see you very well. Hi, hi, hi. I Good morning. Th I think there was some technical snag. Yeah, now, okay. now it's now, so. Good morning, uh, Dr. Matthew. We have to, uh, to uh, promote this with me and Good morning, good morning. Go ahead and show us your case. Uh, Thank Bandar, you. Um, uh, I heard Manish's voice also. Yeah, yes. Manish is here. And we have also Dr. Uh, Pramod is washed up with me and uh, who else? Dr. Munawar and Dr. Sandeep are also here on the po uh, podium as a panel. Dr. Munawar from Okay, I think Indonesia. there is a delay in our uh, uh, voice. Uh, uh, this is uh, giving you a brief history, Pramod wants to tell. Uh, can you show the history, please? Yeah, this is a 65-year-old gentleman who is diabetic and hypertensive. He had a recent uh, acute inferior of mine, and the LV function was uh, 45%. Angio showed uh, triple vessel disease. Show me the next slide. Next. Okay. Uh, the ECG did show a small Q wave in lead to 3 AVF, and uh, uh, other than that, basically, he has some angina and did the angiogram. We'll show you the angiogram what we have taken today. You've got a posterior origin, um, right coronary artery, which was uh, actually standard in the mid-segment initially at the time of the inferior wall MI. He was treated in, uh, out of Madras, uh, outside of Madras, uh, somewhere, and mid-segment was occluded. They went ahead and standard that. Uh, a patient came to us a uh, couple of weeks, a couple of days later and when we did the angiogram we saw a dominant right artery and the stent is patent in the mid-segment then there is uh, some distal disease. The next picture. This uh, origin of the PDA also has uh, significant disease. Next. And uh, mid PDA also has some dish. This is what we have as far as the right is concerned. Next. We have some retrograde filling of the right. I mean, sorry, a lady. Next. Left main is the disease tree. Proximal circumflex is okay. Proximal LED is okay. And this is is occluded. And uh, next, point one has some disease. Next. Okay. Next. Go back. Okay. This is where we, what we have now. Stop. The LED has a blunt occlusion after the diagonal. Diagonal has 60-70% uh, narrowing in the mid-segment and some disease at the ostium also. You, any of you wants to comment on it or uh, you want us to go ahead straight with our comments? Okay. So, Dr. Matthew, the question I have here is, uh, so he, the patient had an inferior infarct uh, and the right's been treated. The LAD clearly needs to be revascularized. Um, and, and the distal circ also is occluded. So the, the concept of complete revascularization and how you approach that, and, and is this patient a surgical candidate if you're not able to revascularize his LAD, which is a CTO? Actually, this patient was referred to surgery, and uh, the surgeon uh, said he was not too keen to go ahead because he has got an impaired uh, liver function and there are some cirrhotic changes. Uh, so he said uh, if we can avoid, we would li they would like to avoid it and send the patient back to us. Yeah, so obviously the patient would be best treated by a complete revascularization and the targets are not very attractive. That, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right is diffusely diseased, mm -hmm. distally. LED is a CTO. Okay. One can see the distal LED, which seems to be okay. And the circumflex distally is also occluded. Mm -hmm. So the point is going to be, what is your strategy now? 
Yeah. Are you going to revascularize the right first? Okay, um, both correct. Uh, we need uh, proper uh, uh, pictures from the right and we also thought that when we have some retrograde filling of the LED and circumflex, we would like to utilize it optimally. So we have a bilateral puncture. We decided to approach the right first. We said the PDA has two lesions, uh, which is uh, though infarct-related artery, but the inferior wall is still moving, muscle thickness are maintained. So we want to treat that also. So we decided that we will go ahead and waiting for you to come get connected. We will go ahead and do the right because the, today's uh, main interest is CTO. So we said we will do the CTO together and uh, uh, I would do this case along with Pramod and uh, we, we have Vijay Kumar to uh, interpret the IVIS and OCT images if we are doing it. And next case, Saito is doing a, again another double bifurcate, uh, double CTO. Wonderful. That's very interesting. <coughs> so okay. we can see that both the groins are uh, sticked. Ne next picture. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay, show the live images, please. L images uh, show the, us uh, less and less. Okay. Uh, we we wi wired using a. Uh, Sion wire, we wired the RCA and now what you see is the balloon doesn't cross. It's a 2 mm balloon. We took a mosaic uh, NC balloon but the balloon wouldn't cross. What uh, strikes your mind, uh, uh, the, the, the proximal RCA lesion is not very tight. Next. See, the balloon is getting stuck at the level of the stent. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, uh, immediately Saito was sitting inside the uh, control room. He jumped out and said, Matthew, there is a problem. Uh, I mean, I said uh, his, uh, um, uh, he is so adapt to detecting problems and giving mm -hmm. solutions. He immediately recognized that the wire was uh, the should be under the stent. That's what we also thought. We had already taken another wire to go side by side. Next. It's a, a, a learning case. The, the balloon is getting stuck at the stent. Do you see this? Next. What we did is we took another picture in RAO view. The, in this view, you can make out actually the wire is on the margins or behind the stand possibly. Next. Ne we took another wire. Next. We made sure that the balloon is moving freely. Came to RIO to see the alignment of this wire against the previous wire. Next. So confirm that it's in good position. Next. Dilated and go ahead and show the stand post. We used a biomime uh, tapered stand. You can see the, the difference between the distal vessel and the proximal vessel. In the ideal situation to use a tapered stand. This is a 2.75, 2.25, 30 millimeter stand. Next. Yeah. Go back. Morph. It looks actually good. But very, we thought nice. we will post dilate the proximal segment a little further. So Next. I think it's a very nice yes. teaching uh, Next. lesson to, for wires that can yeah. get behind the strut, stent struts uh, and to either Next. rewire it or use a second wire uh, in, a, in a sort of a J or a loop fashion so you don't get under the strut. Next. Then we took, because we realized the wire has gone behind the stent, we also know that the stent is underdeployed. You don't need an IVIS to recognize that. <laughs> pacing, 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 pacing. See, we went ahead and post dilated pacing, that yeah, segment yeah, also with the NC uh, 4.5 balloon. Next. Sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, please. And uh, now what happened is uh, we, we kept that, we needed a, 
retrograde, I mean, retrograde feeling also. This is a posterior origin. We thought we want to make sure that we will be able to get a good stable diagnostic catheter position before I take out the wire from the right. That wire actually stabilizes the guiding catheter position very well. But because that uh, right was done through the right groin, I would, have, I would prefer to go, do the left also through the right groin. So, took, uh, for, only for my convenience, I took an uh, ambulance uh, diagnostic editor to engage the right to check whether it is engaging properly. Next. Next. It engages well. Next. So, we pulled out the 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 left catheter the right catheter out and went with the guiding catheter through from the the right groin now we have next we have a wire in the we decided to do the led diagonal first so in dr. the dr matthew says i want in I want the diagonal and another micro catheter so yeah go can ahead you, can you Give us a little bit of an idea how you approach this CTO, what your thought process is, uh, and, and what your, your, your plan will be going into it. Okay. Um, this uh, CTO, we have no idea how long it has been a CTO. We have no history prior, no EC changes, anything documented. So we expect this to be a old or lesion, especially with the retrograde collaterals like this. The diagonal is very close to the origin of the, um, at the total occlusion, so we have to protect the diagonal. Anyway, diagonal probably will need to be treated also. So we have a wire there and got that uh, microcatheter, this the thermo microcatheter I, I, and the BMW wire and position the microcatheter uh, close to the lesion and I've got, got a BMW wire, we didn't proceed any further. And I intend to see whether this wire will cross. So your plan, If your not, plan probably is step down to a soft, a smaller wire. So your plan is uh, escalation of anti-grade wires first to see if you could cross. Absolutely, Okay. absolutely. Do you yeah. always go first with the BMW wire, you know, the workhorse wire, knowing that it's a CTO, long and duration, possibly hard Generally, I, I heart do that, lesion. especially when you have got a proximal, yeah, pro, and proximal vessel is disease-free. I would like to do everything to protect as, that before I bring in a, uh, a stiffer wire if I have to. Small time. Can you, can you comment also on your uh, choice of microcatheter here? I mean, uh, we have used a, um, which one? Microcatheter? We have used a fine cross. Okay. We have other choices uh, of Asahi. The, I didn't know that we have it uh, already in the lab. Otherwise, I probably would have tried. I, this is the standard microcatheter which we generally use. Now, only now the Asahi is available. I don't think there is much difference between all these microcatheters except Asahi tip is uh, the 2.6 uh, I was to, or, or I have never used it. Okay, we are stuck, uh, the wire doesn't move too much, I have just left it there, we will take a picture and before we change our strategy. Take. Okay. It has moved a bit. Yeah. Is there any retrograde filling of the LED that you can see, or not much? There, wa there is, but uh, not very, not much. Yeah. Uh, can you go to the LAO? I want to calculate it better. Test. Okay, come to RAO and epicranium. 
after. Okay, we'll take a picture. It is filling all right, but the gap is very, very uh, long. It's a long segment. Yeah, yeah, it's a long segment. Yeah, very long segment. Yeah, our approach here so, would be to take a medical um, brother wire here and feel that for a short period of time before okay. switching to a, 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 a polymer jacketed wire uh, like a Pilot 200. But, but I would try a Miracle 6, 3 okay. or 6, and uh, just see where that, where that goes. Okay, um, uh, how about Gaia? Are you okay. planning to Gaia? Gaia is a great, yeah. Gaia is a great wire yeah. too. No, no, I'm just asking your opinion. No, I think, I think Gaia is a, the, the issue with the Gaia is that you're not going to get that much tactile feedback, mm -hmm. but I think it's a lovely wire. Uh, um, uh, clearly, I think uh, you could start with a one, but you really will need a two here. My concern is you don't okay, have any, I, what, any uh, um, I, I don't know, Gaia, Gaia, Gaia has not worked too well with me. I think there is some problem with, between me and Gaia. <laughs> so basically you should be um, I still using go the wires you are familiar with and where you get a good tactile okay. sensation and… That's right. I. And also, you know, I, my first choice wire for uh, any long CTOs is uh, still the Conquest Pro 12. I don't know. Somehow we got used to it for a long time. I, I don't uh, upgrade my wire from uh, 3 or 6 to 12. I don't do that. I go straight for the 12. Somehow I've got a nice feel about that wire behaving in my hands. So is that the wire you're using now? Yeah, I've got a Conquest Pro 12. Small. So again, this is a very uh, uh, see the the tip stiff of the microcatheter is against the lesion. So I don't. Uh, I would prefer to keep that away from the uh, the the blunt lesion because we, our control on the wire tip will go down if if uh, the microcatheter is too close. Small test. You made, you made some good progress. I, I just tried to see whether the wire can find a way without much difficulty and making sure the tip moves all the time. Yeah, this is a very yeah. stiff polymer jacketed wire. Can you give me an RC injection? Reduce the cranial. Okay. Reduce the cranial. Okay. Go ahead. Inject. Ah. Picture. Uh, I'll take a picture and then look at it in another ang angle. Yeah, absolutely. To make sure that you're. Uh dancing in, in the architecture. Before I puncture the distal cap, I yeah. want to be sure. Uh, I, can you come to an RA? Okay. Picture again. Flap. And it's important, uh, as Dr. Matthews is doing, to do orthogonal views and change the angle so that you know you're not off offline. Go to go to LA corner. Looks like there's another diagonal there. 
No, that's not too good. Uh, a cranium? Not too bad. Okay. Picture. Dr. Matthew, this is Dr. Munawar here. So what kind of uh, wire that's, uh, that you I use? Epicrine. Epicrine. This is a Concourse Pro 12. Oh, Concourse Pro. It's a very stiff wire and it's a tapered tip, polymer jacket. So, so basically you escalating wire just uh, from the BMW and then directly to Concourse Pro? Um, reduce the yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Can you give me two minutes? I just want to. This is very crucial. Uh, person. So you're at the distal cap, but looks sub intimal. Okay. Once again, picture. I take another picture, Dr. Yeah. Matthew. At the side of it. So what happens you here is watch this out. RAO. Fine cross down. Okay. Picture. Matt Table. Calling. Uh, side to side, up and down, close. Yeah. Okay. It's a fantastic wire. It's Boston wire. Yeah. Looks okay. like you're in there. Uh, take a bit. Just to a bed? One more. I, I think we are on, on the right track. Let us check it out. My approach, Dr. Samuel, at the distal cap would have been to take the fine cross so. down and switch out to a little bit of a softer wire. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, stay there. Let me see the weather micro show me properly, Yandy. Micro catheter, I can advance it further. Dr. Matthew, whenever you uh, cross and you want, are comfortable with working, we can even switch to Dr. Saito if, if you are going to do that. We have about 25 minutes of transmission um, time. Uh, I mean, uh, see, it's, uh, Dr. Saito is to start uh, after I finish because... Okay, no problem. Okay, then there's no issue. That's how the timing given to us. Uh, I'm just allowing the micro catheter to take time to go across because sometimes if you are in a hurry, it doesn't move in because it takes always the tra transition takes time. Very good point. What would be your approach here if you're having difficulty with a micro catheter? Would you switch to uh, from a push catheter to a torque catheter, or maybe use laser or some other uh, some other tool? Um, if I have difficulty, uh, I. Uh, most of the time, a 1.25, 1.5 uh, balloon will cross and get a, some dilatation, then come back and use the microcatheter to exchange. Mm -hmm. Usually, it should not give us a problem. Otherwise, uh, tonus could help us 
or uh, any other uh, device. Any suggestions from your end? Uh, see, we are not any, uh, used to many of these devices other than the standard ones we, which we use generally. Yeah, the, 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 the I want to check whether I am in right position, <laughs> whether I am ready to change my wire. So you've moved your fine I cross think so, because the nicely. microcatheter seems to be quite in. Okay, I'll take this wire out. Give me an all star wire. Oh no, give me a BMW wire. I'm comfortable. So now the job of the right is over. I don't need the right ca uh, ca catheter anymore. Now coming back to Munawar's question, why I stepped up from BMW straight to uh, Concourse Pro 12. Uh, I don't know, it may be a force of habit. Uh, uh, when I try to get across into the uh, total occlusion, I want first try wire to be the best wire of mine. So I keep doing, repeat uh, the same process all time and again and sort of it worked well with, uh, with me. Yeah, you, you've become very good with that wire, and clearly you're a, you have a, a, a master expertise. But I think for, for a new operator, I would not recommend going from a BMW to a Conquest Pro 12. Um, it's like going Co Correct. I 100% agree with the... Uh... Go ahead. 8, 10. So the fine cross is out, and now you're going to okay. start ballooning. Yeah. A little more. Some more, some more. No. So go up. And how is our patient 12, doing, 14. Dr. Matthews? Okay. Patient is absolutely fine. Uh, how are you, Satyaraj? You're okay? Okay, he's fine. Okay, give me a, a two millimeter balloon. Non NC. So now that the microcatheter has crossed, the lumen should be good enough to accommodate a two millimeter balloon, a mosaic, a non -com uh, the compliant mosaic. Not, uh, eh? no, no, give me a new one. 215. Uh, I generally use a compliant. No, I said you're taking a non-compliant yeah, non balloon because of balloon its because lower the, profile? I, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, sometimes you may get away with a, a non-compliant balloon also, but uh, here we have the liberty of using whatever the best okay. uh, works with you. Masek, uh, the compliant balloon profile is excellent and um, you saw the tapered send, not many companies uh, do the tapered send these days and it works very well, biomime tapered ones. Can you come to epicranial? Negative. No, crossing without much difficulty, we, we'll go ahead and dilate from here. This we had a documentation that it was not filling. Go ahead. Ten. Oh, it opened up at very low atmosphere itself. Negative. Okay, go up. 
Save. Negative. So we're well, having a little bit of a technical issue. Technical issue, but uh, we are imagining that you're continuing to dilate okay. that segment. And then my question That's right. is dilating uh, at the ten atmosphere, the eight atmosphere. In your CTOs, Dr. Matthews, are you using imaging like IVIS in India, or are you just then proceeding with stenting based on the, the, the need? Uh, oh, no, no, no. We use. We use uh, IVIS, yes. Yeah. We are going to use that to decide the stent size, the length. Go. Three, four. Three, four. Negative. Three, four. Uh, uh, have you resolved the technical problem? Are you able to yes, see it? Yes, it's better now. Negative. The balloon moves quite freely, but uh, let us take a picture. Okay. Now, well, you have a lumen. What, what is the suggestion? We have half an hour left for the, this uh, transmission, small test. Would you like to go with the bigger balloon now or do an IVUS or? I think we'll do an IVUS. Uh, yeah. what, what, uh, Vijay, what do you think? Okay, get the IVUS ready, please. We'll go with an IVUS. Let us assess what we want to do. I'm taking out the right catheter. We don't need it anymore. Agreed, yeah. That will be less uh, things on my table. Now, again, back to uh, the choice of what is uh, I mean, standard teaching we know you step it up slowly when you change wire upgrading it slowly uh, what is the choice of wires all of you have in uh, all of you are very experienced operators the what is your stand uh, most favorite uh, total occlusion wire yes dr munawar Choice of wires. Vijay, you want if to you were doing the up? case. Yes, sir. Yeah. Choice of wires. If you were doing the case. Yes. Um, well, uh, if I do the case CTO like this, I mean that uh, we are CTO this one. Yeah. Yes, and uh, my daily practice is actually just bring down the. Um, uh, micro catheter to as close as possible to the uh, proximal cap and then we start uh, usually with that kind of wire we use uh, soft wire any soft wire and then what we want to do is usually to uh, start with the uh, with the uh, fill the XT first then uh, it's depend if uh, you know if you uh, know if they start then we escalating with uh, it's depend. If more calcified, we direct to go to the uh, Gaia second or Gaia third. But if not, yeah. then so we Gaia uh, first. Then, if still still start, seven, seven. then we are using a very stiff wire like uh, Concus Pro 12. And uh, usually we are doing step down. But sometimes uh, uh, step up, sometimes step down. So if, if uh, we see there is a tiny channel, then we can go with uh, uh, step down with uh, back to XT, uh, then, you know, until, until uh, across. Uh, the problem, I, I, I know that uh, in the past, uh, uh, we do like uh, Dr. Samuel Mathieu, but I mean that. Uh, but but I know Samuel, that Samuel. it's very skillful, Dr. Samuel, because uh, 
doing with very stiff wire, sometimes tactile sensation is very important. When uh, across and if they go to the, to the sub-intimal, then the operator should know there's some resistance if we are pull it back again, you know, then uh, go in, go in, and finally we can go like uh, Dr. Samuel. It's an uh, excellent uh, demonstration of Dr. Samuel. Yes, Dr. Matthews, we're with you. Uh, we, uh, as, yeah, as, uh, who, who was speaking just now? Dr. Dr. Munawar. Uh, Dr. Munawar was speaking. Uh, Munawar, uh, uh, I mean, as, uh, yeah, as you rightly said, absolutely I agree with you, but uh, over the last uh, so many years we graduated to using these wires, but that doesn't mean that what I did is right. I would definitely agree with what Munawar said, it should be the standard teaching, and especially if your experience with these wires are not very, very high. You, you cannot take any kind of liberties because once you make a mistake, you are done for the day. That. Yeah. Okay. Image. Image on. Uh, can you show the IVUS image, please, then? So we're having some technical difficulties again, Dr. Matthew. So you can maybe describe what you see on the IVUS. Okay, go ahead. Abhijay. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are in the distal LED now. Uh, LED is around 2 millimeter size, the grossly underfilled vessel. Record. And you can see lot of plaque uh, from uh, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock position. Yeah, we are just starting the pullback. And this is a diffusely diseased vessel and a grossly underfilled, so it looks very small. Yes. Yes, we are back, yeah, we yes. So, and, so far uh, we are in the and, true lumen. And it's all in true lumen. You can just see a branch. Yeah, we, can, we could see a branch joining there. And a three layer architecture, well maintained here. So we are still in the true lumen. And it's a diffusely disease vessel. You can see plaque around 360 degrees. And, and it's slightly bigger now. It is 2.5 to 3 millimeter vessel here. And another branch joining here, a bit of calcium, and you can just see a lot of plaque. So this is much bigger here. It's about and all soft, soft plaque. Yeah, it's a it's a bigger. Yeah, it's a three oak here. Do you get a sense that uh, you fenestrated and came and back all in, looked or soft true to and true and all the way? No, I think it looks all the way true and true. And still we are in true human. I think we are just coming close to the proximal. And vessel is bigger here, 3 millimeter. This is distal to the Yeah, there's a lot of plaque uh, and a little bit of calcium. Calcium is on the adventitious side. And now it is an intimal calcium. The vessel is much bigger now. 3.25. Uh, yeah, you're approaching the proximal cap now. And all the way, all the way through, it is yeah, uh, pro, true, true human. Uh, you can see another branch, the diagonal, diagonal branch is getting Here's connected here. You can see the wire. And vessel is very big here, 3.5 to 4 millimeter. So you have to stent all the way from the diag down. Yeah, 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 we had to stand from all the way down. And we had to just to see the distal landing zone. Maybe it doesn't appear to be a disease-free zone, so we had to do a, a small size stand and uh, approximately blow it up. So I think this is a very great learning point in CTOPCI. Dr. Matthews has made this look very easy yep. uh, as he is a very experienced operator. But the imaging component, taking just the five minutes little, uh, to appropriately do the imaging, and get, the, getting the landmarks the and the size, is really the only way you're going to have a, lo uh, a durable result uh, in this patient's LAD. So, excellent demonstration.
Okay, Manish, uh, now that uh, uh, we got this information, we will direct the lady properly and uh, before that, uh, we will spare uh, the osteum of the LED and the osteum of the diagonal doesn't seem to be very, very diseased. Much diseased from IVUS. Uh, in IVUS also, it looks okay. So, we will not stand the diagonal osteum. We just want to recheck whether we need to stand the diagonal at all. There is some mid disease. It appears now around 50 60 percent. We will do one more check and then let us take a decision on that. I'll take the CINI now. Show the CINI, please. Proximal segment is diseased. Uh, yeah. Okay. We, what we'll do is before we go ahead and stand across the diagonal, we are going to uh, st uh, do the diagonal first and uh, treat the diagonal uh, away from the ostium and then stand the LED from right across the diagonal. 2 mm NC balloon, please. What's the length of the LED uh, lesion you're going to stand, Dr. Matthew? It looks very long. Mm, looks. Just there, just doing the measurements, please. Measurement. Give us two minutes. Just, yeah. yeah, just, just no, no. Go to long view. Uh, yeah, yeah, LED. Just go to the long view. Doctor Vijay Kumar is our expert on all the imaging. And he runs our core lab also. Done, 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 done. Go to long view. Manish, uh, for your information, we have a, a, a excellent core lab. Just uh, for research purposes, we have established, not commercial, and it is uh, doing very well. We have been regularly doing analysis, both. Uh, Conry, uh, Ibis, OCT, all. Now Congra we are upgrading it for uh, the structural heart Congra also. Congratulations. That's yes, very good. Yeah. It's very, very yeah. It is uh, located is now at Madras Medical Mission, but it is uh, independent of all institution. It is uh, purely our own investment. Uh, what will you but be putting if, in the If you diagonal? go with the disease and I was, uh, it looks like you have to, uh, you have to uh, stent uh, uh, to the distal LED. I think maybe we can just find a zone uh, uh, beyond the uh, lesion, uh, maybe a reasonable uh, pl place with a less than 50 percent clock burden. Maybe we can end up with a 28 or 30 millimeter stent proximally rather than going down and chasing all the diseased area. Uh, Vijay, I think we will have to little, little longer because I could feel that uh, lesion uh, was not giving way distally. Uh, uh, the problem here is uh, is a disease uh, throughout. Uh, it is not a disease free, it is underfilled vessel. And you can you could see the plaque everywhere. Okay, go up. This is a perfect case see for up. a tapered body. What do you all say? Uh, Dr. Saito uh, was uh, sitting here. What is his opinion? Just, uh, uh, Saito, you saw the disease, the, the, you saw the IVUS picture? Maybe I mean, what, what do you think, what, we, what should we do? Maybe I, I want to place a stent on this uh, initial uh, For the LED also? Okay, um, uh, uh, when the, uh, Dr. Saito feels that he would not put a very long stent, uh, he will uh, treat only that uh, proximal across the diagonal and uh, maybe f uh, 20, 30 millimeters, yeah, sir? Yeah. How much? So what, is you, what do you all feel? Well, it's a difficult it's decision, decision difficult but I think you can see. Just find yeah. from diagonal, you go down. Yes. Diagonal, you go down and find a place with a less than 50 percent block burden. That's okay. Just find, go As down. As per the IVAS, there is a uh, lot of disease in so okay. narrowing. That's right. It's, uh, now, it's, if it's we had to go for surgery, what would the surgeon have done? <laughs> Do yeah, and in this case, I mean, it's it's not like surgery is in the future. So I think that uh, as long as you have good outflow um, and 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 are matched, you should be okay. But that's a difficult decision. It doesn't. Okay. 
kilonu perusa digestion okay G- give me a 2.25 stent what is the long stent you have make 2.25 sir we'll stop somewhere here what do yeah. you think and get a we'll use a tapered stent dr saito for the lady yeah. i have no experience okay <laughs> he, the tapered stent privileges only we indians have japan they have not used uh, the tapered stent okay. that's what we just see in gangar ke how many of you have uh, are familiar with the tapered stents Well, I think uh, I use it quite often. Well, we don't have the luxury of having it, but we would yeah, like we to have it. Yeah, we are comfortable. It makes sense. Yeah. The tapering vessel of... As it branches, so the vessel goes on to become a small... So, which is 2.53 we take? Or? Yes, sir. 2.53. Yeah. Or 2 to 5, this thing, whatever. I want the stents please it comes in the sizes i think 2.753 and 3.5 and tapers by 5.5 mm in the lengths lengths are 30 yeah, 40 50 mm. 60 wow or oh, 60 60 we have 60 up to 60 60 is the longest that's wonderful price is a little more but then you know much less than two stents <laughs> yeah sorry we what is the length no give me 2.25 stent 2.25 doesn't come in tapered please for the diag no uh, 2.25 comes in tapered the one we used uh, uh, for the rca was the 2.75 2.25, 2.25. Ah, I see. Tape is mm-hmm. using a tape at 275. Mm-hmm. 25. That's kind of cool. 275. 2.75. We have another 5 minutes, 7 uh, minutes to go. I would love to see you put these stents in. Okay. I hope we'll be three to tape at what is the size here? three will taper to 2.75 how much is 275 goes approximately how much it goes sir? another point two because approximately we need a bigger uh, okay I, i think i will uh, I, i'll take after this picture So you're going to be treating the diagonal first yeah, after okay. Matthew, correct? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. So sure. position the table. Yeah, it also makes sense that you know you're going to put in a stent in LED and then Jailing you'll it. be worried. Yeah. If the ostium of the diagonal is covered and then you have to do a lot of tricks to get in. Yeah. a little, little bit of work to get in looks good picture had to come back uh, till that side yeah. brand test do you have any specific tips on inflation test. pressure or duration when you're using okay, a tapered well. stent go well. Well, no. unlike the other biomimes products much? which usually Seven, expand from the center and go... Seven, eight. This Seven, doesn't. Eight. This Seven, usually eight. starts Seven, from eight. proximal Seven, to distal. Yeah. Twelve, that. Twelve, As you can see here. Uh, you see this... Uh, I, I hate somebody preparing the balloon and stents like this. They have not taken the pro- proper negative suction. Negative. It's, uh, it's terrible. Then you, you do not know whether the stent is expanded. <laughs> the standard protocol for stent expanded. preparation and balloon preparation should be the same. I don't think we should compromise on that. But... 
Yeah. But uh, I just, this uh, BMW Universal, I am using this to decide my length of the stand. Okay, that side branch was disease free, at least it was retrograde filling up to there. This is 45. I will take a 60 tapered stand. Yeah, okay, yes. We all agree. Okay, give me a 60, please. Uh, 60. Uh, I have decided looking at the IWIS, uh, Vijay also is a little concerned about using a 2.5 stand in a high pressure situation. So he prefers to have the distal part of the stand at least 2.5 and deploy it at high pressure so that it will become 2.5. And uh, 2.75 can be post dilated to 3, 3.25 at, at least. Okay. Yeah. 60, so, 3 into 2.25. 2. So 2. that is our decision now. No, no, no. 60, 3 into 2.5. 3 to okay, 60, 2.75 into 2.5. Ah, 3 into 2.5. So 3 into 2.5, 60. 3 into 2.5. You don't have 3, 2.75 into 60. 2.25. Give it fast, please. We have only 5 minutes. It's the ideal case to decide uh, uh, using a tapered stand rather than two overlapping stands and uh, we have the documentation with IWAS uh, negative properly. I mean, there is a general tendency of not preparing the stent balloon properly because they feel if you go on negative, uh, the stent becomes loose on the balloon. I don't think that will happen at all because these stent technologies are so well yeah. done now. Right. You absolutely don't, right. the stent, even if you want to move, it doesn't move. It's absolutely correct. They're very well crimped. So you can safely do it and prepare the balloon properly. You can go negative into the vessel. You saw that the calcium on the IVAS? Yes, yes, we saw. Absolutely. <laughs> it wasn't circumferential, but it was there. So yes. we will have little difficulty here. Getting in. So yeah. we will be very careful in advancing now. Sometimes it may not it will get caught in that calcium even though we have prepared the lesion well, especially this is a long stand. As I said, uh, slowly you have to allow the stand to move in like the microcatheter. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, Keep watching the, the guiding catheter. There you go. Almost there. Take the picture. Yeah. We are fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Six, seven. Seven. Eight, nine. Eight, nine. 10, 12. Give me a 3 NC balloon, please. 13. You can see the taper. Yeah. You can really appreciate that. Yeah. Negative. Um, 
and as we uh, used to teach uh, in the olden days, still it matters. When we are withdrawing loan lo from the long stands, make sure the guiding is disengaged. When you, otherwise, you can put, drag the guiding in and dissect the ostium. Take a picture. Though it is all very simple things, it's extremely important learning issues. That's a very good point. Okay. I'm taking that balloon. I don't know whether it will cross the lesion again. go to one atmosphere. So I, the transition from the stent to the normal vessel, I just want to have the balloon there to, for uh, maybe a couple of minutes. Uh, it generally helps to mold that area better. A very low atmosphere, 1 to 1.5 millimeter um, atmosphere pressure. Sorry. Negative. I just went up a little there. Clearly the proximal vessel will need to be post dilated aggressively and uh, you have to rewire the diagram. Correct. I think this has been a beautiful demonstration of a, a complex case. The diagonal wire is moving very <laughs> inside. That yeah. means uh, the proximal part of the stent is definitely under the proximal yes. three. Three into eight or three into fifteen? Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, whether we should wire the diagonal now or not? Yeah, I mean, I think I, in my lab I would just so that we're, we, we don't, I mean, not that it, there's going to be a problem uh, r removing it, but this way you can do your uh, post dilatation and pot technique and finish with an IVIS. Uh, we're, what we're going to do is take this opportunity to thank you and come back to you, and we're going to go to a lecture. Um, can we take one Sine and see the, the whole, whole uh, LAD before we depart? Yeah, I'll, I, yeah, I'll give it to you. Give me one minute. I'll just we'll put, put this balloon the into the guiding and then give you the scene. Okay, can you stay ready for the scene? Yes. Okay. One sec, one sec, please. Contrast. Just giving you the injection. Uh, did he have any complaints? Satyaraj, uh, to bring it. Hold your breath. Beautiful. Very nice yeah, case. It Dr. looks Matthew. good. Uh, we, what we'll do is uh, we'll let you all go. We, we will uh, just post dilate the proximal segment, and uh, I may not uh, cross into the. Uh, uh, diagonal because uh, I don't think there is any need to uh, uh, have a kissing balloon for uh, all the stents which has got a uh, agree uh, uh, across the side branch. Yeah. Especially in this case, I will not do it.
because I don't have an proximal stent on the ostium of the diagonal. Yes. So I don't need to post dilate there. I will only now work on the LAD, uh, prepare it, well, I mean, dilate it well, re look at it with an IVIS and get yeah, an optimal also. result, and that should be uh, the case, should Some be done. Nitroglycerin injection and then. Fantastic. See the Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful case. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Manish. Thank you, Munawar Rubender, of course. Uh, thank you for uh, having us live. We will see now, you in a, in a, You can in a see the hour. hero in action. Dr. Saito will come in. <laughs>